The new year is just around the corner, and I thought it'd be a good time to share some useful apps, shortcuts, and extensions I have set up on my computer, powering my workflow going into the new year. Hopefully, you'll find something helpful to incorporate in your own setup. I'll try to include links to everything in the description. To start, I use a free program called Raycast to perform system actions such as emptying the trash, launching apps, searching for files, and much more, all without using my mouse. I've disabled the built-in spotlight search function in macOS and set the command space keyboard shortcut to opening the command bar within Raycast. The Windows and Linux versions of Raycast aren't available yet, but there are apps that perform the same functions such as Yuli on Windows and the command line in Linux. Honestly, if you're using Linux, I'm not sure this video will be too useful for you. The great thing about Raycast is that there's a community-driven extension store that can run commands for almost anything you'd want, such as interacting with Spotify, Unsplash, Notion, Obsidian, and more. Now, let's use Raycast to open the next app on this list. For the past couple of weeks, I've been exclusively using this new browser called Arc. Using Raycast, it's the first app I open to start my day. I've been using web versions of pretty much all of the services I use, including email, calendar, Spotify, and Notion, among other apps. Arc makes this incredibly easy by allowing you to set and see your favorite browser tabs in this grid-like layout in the sidebar. Speaking of the sidebar, you'll notice a couple of interesting features. While Arc isn't the first browser to have tabs on the side instead of the top, the execution is well done. Folders and tabs that are above this dividing line work like usual tabs, but any tabs under this line will automatically close themselves after a set period of time that you can customize to prevent that dreaded mountain of tabs from piling up. This is great if you're like me and sometimes forget which tabs are important and which tabs are only needed temporarily. Additionally, the vertical layout allows you to see more information on each tab at a glance. In Google Chrome, for example, when the tabs get too out of hand, they can get so thin that the only thing you see is the icon of the website, which isn't too helpful if you have, let's say, 30 YouTube tabs open. Pretty much everything in the sidebar can be dragged and dropped and customized in Arc. Keyboard shortcuts, which we will explore in depth later, can be customized for every action in the browser. By default, in Arc, Control N brings up a new note, a feature built into the browser, and a really handy way to take quick notes which you can share with friends. I have it set up so Control E brings up an easel, another feature in Arc which is like a canvas to put images, web page captures, text, drawings, and more. You can find your notes and easel safely stored in the library that can be accessed by swiping right on the trackpad or with the keyboard shortcut Shift Command L. The library also shows your downloads, recently accessed files, and desktop, so you can drag files easily into a tab. Maybe you're uploading some files to Dropbox or sharing a meme on Discord. You can even drag another tab beside the active tab to split screen. This isn't an issue on larger monitors, but on my laptop where screen real estate is limited, or if I simply want to get rid of distractions, the sidebar can be hidden with Command S. Another feature I appreciate in Arc is the built-in picture-in-picture. For any video player, whether that's on YouTube or you're watching Netflix or Prime Video, if you click onto another tab, the video automatically opens in a mini player that you can fling around the screen and resize. You can also turn off this behavior by clicking on the little lock beside the URL. Speaking of the web page URL, in Arc, holding Shift Command C copies the URL of the active tab to your clipboard, which shaves off a little bit of time if copying URLs is something you do often. The last main feature I want to talk about is the media controls that I use with Spotify. When I play a song on Spotify and then click on another tab, the audio keeps playing in the background and little music notes animate out of the icon for the favorite tab I set for Spotify, and media controls show up in the bottom left which I can use to skip and pause. There's other uses and appearances for this media controller, but this is how I interact with it most of the time. Now, Arc is a Chromium browser, which means that extensions that work on browsers such as Google Chrome, Brave, and Microsoft Edge will work on Arc. Before we dive into some extensions I find particularly useful, I want to cover some useful keyboard shortcuts for any browser. In pretty much every browser, Command L on Mac or Control L on Windows selects the search bar. Command W on Mac or Control W on Windows closes the active tab, and Command Shift T or Control Shift T restores the most recently closed tab. Command on Mac or Control on Windows followed by numbers 1 through 8 selects the corresponding tab, with 1 being the leftmost tab in the browser, and each subsequent number the tab to the right of the previous tab. 
Command or Control 9 makes the rightmost tab the active tab, regardless of how many tabs there are. In YouTube, you can speed up or slow down a video by hitting shift period or shift comma respectively. Once you get used to watching videos at two times speed, it's really hard to go back. There's a lot of other useful keyboard shortcuts in YouTube, which you can view by pressing command or control forward slash. On Mac, command Q quits an app, while on Windows, the shortcut is alt F4. On that note, Raycast comes with a command to quit all apps. These are just my most used keyboard shortcuts, but learning keyboard shortcuts in general will save you so much time in the long run, turning actions that take moving around your mouse and clicking through menus into something that can be done entirely from your keyboard. Now going back to extensions, these will work on every Chromium browser, but some of these extensions are available on Firefox as well. uBlock Origin is an extension I install in pretty much every browser I try out. It blocks a lot of ads, you can set content filters, and it can warn you if you're going to visit a sketchy site. I love using the element picker to get rid of visual elements on sites. The changes are persistent, so even if you reload the page, they'll stay there unless you get rid of the changes you made within uBlock settings. Next, Violent Monkey is an open source user script manager. It allows you to customize web pages and automate work through scripts that you can install from a website called Greasy Fork. The user script I make most use of is called Simple Sponsor Skipper, and it automatically skips sponsors and lengthy intros on YouTube based on the Sponsor Block API. Unhook YouTube is an extension that hides things that are distracting to you on YouTube, such as recommendations and comments. You can customize which visual elements to hide or display. The next extension is a companion to a free and open source password manager called Bitwarden, which has a mobile app as well. It can autofill, generate strong passwords, and do pretty much anything you'd need out of a password manager. Arc has a feature called Boosts, which lets you inject custom CSS or scripts to run whenever a particular site is launched. Right now, Arc doesn't have an official boost store, but a community member has created a website called Arc Boosts where you can find boosts for a variety of sites, such as GitHub, and Google Calendar, and Twitter. Currently, Arc is only available for Mac, but they're actively working on a Windows version. No word on a Linux version yet, but a mobile version also seems to be under development. Some alternatives for Windows include Vivaldi Browser and Firefox with modifications. Right now there's a waitlist to join Arc, but if you're a student and have an institutional email, I think you can get an invite to Arc pretty much instantly. At least that's how it was for me. I'll leave a link to that in the description. Otherwise, I have a couple of invite links to ARC, so feel free to grab them. I've also put the link to the ARC community Discord server, where people sometimes share invite links as well. The next app that I've only gotten access to quite recently is called Amy. I've been enjoying it so far, and I'm using it to combine my to-dos, calendar, and CRM. Amy has some really playful UI, and I really like the fact that it has a command bar, which I can add to-dos with. You can drag your to-dos right onto the calendar. There's integrations with Spotify and the Health app, which may seem gimmicky, but I will say that the best tool or system is one you'll actually use. So I think that the user experience and aesthetics are particularly important in this case. The personal plan is free, and they're sort of in a closed beta right now, but you can sign up to join the waitlist. I don't have any invites right now, but I think that after some time, they might provide me with some, which I'd be happy to share. CleanShot X is the only paid app on this list, and it's just a really polished screenshotting and screen recording tool. For the most part, the built-in screenshot and screen record tools in macOS are good enough for general purposes, and you can access the menu for that with the shortcut Shift-Command-5. The free and open source Windows alternative to this app is called ShareX, and it has pretty much all the same features as CleanShot X. And now to rapid fire through other apps I access through Arc, Notion acts as a catch-all for various kinds of content, while Google Drive I use for collaborative document editing, making slides, and storing files. If there's any apps from this list you'd like me to make a more in-depth video on, or if you have any questions about anything I mentioned, let me know in the comments. I'd love to see any suggestions you have, hear your thoughts, and what apps and time-saving tips you personally use in the comments. As always, the best system is one you'll actually use, and what works for your unique needs. Thanks for watching.